Hi everybody, you're now experiencing the Gretna Bill Show. Hi everybody, welcome to the Gretna Bill Show. Thanks for joining us. We're here at the, uh, well, John and I were talking earlier. It's the, it's the uh, Tour de France preview show that we want to do. So the tour starts on Saturday morning. We want to get this thing done tonight and get it out there Friday so you guys can take a look at it. And, um, you know, John and I were talking earlier and he was saying, well, why don't we, uh, why don't we call it um, uh, breaking it down with Gretna Bill? And I said, well, yeah, I said, that's pretty good. Let's call it Gret- breaking it down with Gretna Bill and Luxie. But um, so, you know, seriously, what we want to try to do is, um, you know, when I first uh, when I first opened the bike shop, John and I were when I first met John, it was like about 90 or so. And I didn't I was barely a mountain biker. I didn't know shit about road biking or the Tour de France, whatever. And, you know, he turned me on to that. and, And it's been a love affair ever since. So what we want to try to do with all due respect to the race is to try to set the stage so you guys can enjoy it in the same fashion that we have been doing it, right? We want to go through it because it's really interesting and it's not boring at all. There is stuff going on every minute. So we're going to try to break that down and, and we're going to try to tell you what you can look for. And, um, you know, John, you've been watching the tour since 86. So in general, you know, what's your feelings about the tour? I mean, it's like the Super Bowl. We were talking about that. Oh, it's incredible. In Europe, um, this is the Super Bowl, the World Series, the Stanley Cup, and the NBA Finals all wrapped up into three weeks. And with this year's race coming off the COVID quarantine in Europe, where there was no racing from probably the middle of March till a month ago, this is uncharted territory. Going to use that word, you know, going to use that phrase a lot, but it really is. Nobody really knows what's going going to happen starting Saturday as far as the race is going to go. This is really going to be an interesting kind of tour de France because after the tour ends in three weeks, they have a week, there's a week break and then they go right to the Giro d'Italia, which is a tour of Italy. And then there's a week after that and they go right into the Velta Espanol and then which is tour of Spain. So you got three grand tours back to back to back this year. Plus you have multiple single day state or or multiple single day races in there that will be fitted in uh, mostly in Northern France and Belgium and whatnot and, and Italy and Spain also. So these guys are going to be really busy going into basically Thanksgiving and early December. Yeah. So think about it. So, you know, the team may be composed, uh, comp- comprised of uh, maybe 30 riders or so. In that neighborhood. And and a, and a Tour de France team is eight, eight guys on a team, uh, down from nine a few years ago. And so uh, there's 22 teams. So that means 22 times eight is a total of 166, 176 riders. Now think about this for a moment. So if you're the team manager... You've got to put an eight-man team together for the tour. And then a week later, you've got to put a team together for the Euro in Italy. And then a week a week after that, you've got to put another team together for the uh, Welta. Belta. And the Span- Spaniards got to do that. So now, to race a grand tour is just brutal. It's, tw- it's 23 days. So it's 21 stages. And it's two rest days in there, right? Yeah, two rest days. And... um. In this particular tour, uh, which would be the 107th edition, so 106 before this. Now, there were some, it started in 1903. There were some years off for for the war years and so on and so forth. And, you know, originally it was started uh, by this guy named Henry de Grange. And he had a, like a sports newspaper magazine thing. And um, it was called Lato. And so... He came up with this idea that they would promote this this thing, right? Yep. Uh, by going from town to town and 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 circumnavigate France, Tour de France. So, which is another thing I wanted to ask you real quick. It, it, how, do you say Tour de France or do you say like Bobke, Tour de France? No, no, it's it's Tour de France. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so, um, you know, you got to figure in 1903 there was no radio, right? No. And there was no TV. There was nothing. So this was a way to get out there and, and you know, communicate this new magazine and at the same time uh, promote the sport. Um, and it's been going strong ever since. And then they started added climbing. I think uh, in 1910, they added the Tourmalet, 
right? And that's still now. I think right from the get go. Really? I think right from the first couple of years, you got to remember the first the the for a very long time up until probably the war years. You know, your average stage in the Tour de France was two hundred plus kilometers a day, possibly as much as three three hundred and fifty. So these guys would be on their bikes literally all day, and they were allowed no outside support. There was actually a leader. I think in the twenties who had to stop, he broke his fork on a descent and had to stop at a blacksmith shop and fix his own bike because if he would have gotten story. any outside assistance, he would have been DQ'd. I mean, these guys carried all their own tires. They carried everything they needed. Um, they had to go know, find their own food. They pretty much were on their own and it, they circum circumvented uh, France and the stages were very long. I mean, it was, and, and, you know, no paved roads to speak of, you know, cobblestone roads and, early macadamized roads but for the most part they were on dirt i mean these climb I mean, no gears you had a flip flop no gearing, rear hub, right. no so, gearing so yeah so there was this guy named camp campagnola right and so what they used to do is they'd have a, a mountain of climbing gear on the one side of the wheel and then a and a flatlander yep. gear on the other side of the wheel and they'd actually take the wheel off and switch it but then in them days it was it was bolted on right oh so, yeah so wing nuts so, so, wing nuts wing nuts so they invented, uh, Campy invented the quick, quick release, release and then flipped the wheels. Then eventually, you know, the rest of the story. So, um, you know, that's, that's the history of Campy. And uh, speaking of history, Bianchi also, John's got that shirt on today. You know, they're the oldest bike company still in existence, right? 1990 yep, something or other. 18. Eight, or 18, right? 18, 18 something. Yeah. 1890 something. Um, okay. So, so here we are at the tour. Um so we've got we've got uh, twenty two teams, eight riders a team. We've got twenty one stages. We've got basically it's going to cover twenty three days. It's gonna it's going to be two rest days, and God knows they need them. And you're looking at about thirty four hundred and some kilometers. So you know I usually do the math at ten to six. So for every ten kilometers, there's six miles. So it's about what two thousand probably a little twenty two hundred twenty one hundred miles. Yeah. So miles. basically, to give you a frame of reference, it's like going from. Um, Georgia to Maine, the Appalachian Trail, or something like that, in distance, and um, so uh, you know about that. Uh, uh, what I wanted to ask you is uh, basically, you got some news to give us is about how did you know we're not going to dwell on COVID, but how how did that affect this year's uh, situation, and how has that changed just in the last day or so? Well, up until yesterday, the ASO, who is the the owner of the Tour de France. They had a two strikes, you're out, basically rule with the tour, with, with the testing and whatnot. If anyone on a certain team, any support person, any mechanic, soigneur, which is a team helper, anyone involved in any given team, if two people test positive for COVID, they're out. The team's out. That's been changed in the last 24 hours that they're not going to be quite so aggressive as far as throwing a team out. I suspect in the, in the background that some teams kind of complain. It's like, what if someone very loosely um, aligned with the team tests positive and then another a mechanic or somebody tests positive and they happen to be leading on GC general classification or leading the race or whatever, they're out. Well, you know, I, it's a gray area. I mean, I think there's a lot of kind of, I, I don't want to say they're, they're certainly not making it up as they go along. But it's going to be a different kind of race this year because of the fact that, you know, obviously coming off of COVID, people are going to have to be they have to social distance and do the thing on the on on the, along the road. I think the crowds will not be anywhere near what they were. I don't think anyone's allowed to be on the mountain stages like they normally are. You know, tens of thousands of people on some of these climbs. Um, the the depart the the depart towns the start towns will. They're, they're very much going to control the amount of people in the starts and finish and stuff. The riders right now are in a bubble. The riders have been in a bubble for probably the last week or two, if not longer. So these guys have been together for the most part, the, the tour teams, their mechanics, their soigneurs, everyone that's involved that's going to the tour because they're all in Nice now. The, the race starts in Nice in the south of France along the Mediterranean. Um, they're in their bubble and they will not go outside of that bubble for the next three weeks. There's no family this year, nobody outside coming in. Um, it's going to be, you know, they're used to it. It's been this way for the last month and even longer than that. I mean, these guys just want to race, so they'll make whatever concessions they got to make. So it, it, but it will, it does make this race really a standalone, interesting event to see how the rest of the season is going to go as far as the Grand Tours. And, you know, we've already completed a bunch of good races leading into it that are classic prequels to oh, yeah. the Tour de France. We had the, the Tour de Dauphiné. Uh, or the Criterium de yeah. Dauphiné, we had Lombardi, uh, yeah. what else we have Well, in there? normally, Tour of Suisse. Yeah, everything's been very 
different this year. Racing basically started in Europe, in continental Europe, uh, August 1st. So they've already had a few of the Italian classics. They've had uh, Milan San Remo. They had Tour of uh, Lombardy two weeks ago. And they also had the Criterium de Delphine, which is usually, I think, a seven or eight day uh, stage race in France. This year it was five days, but it's the real, it's always on the record because normally the Fran- Tour de France takes place in real late June and in, in, through July. Delphine take place in June. So this year, it obviously took place a few weeks ago or, or a week and a half ago. A week and a half, yeah. And it's a good barometer to kind of see who's where they need to be. I mean, it's really is uncharted territory. Really, a lot of these guys are not sure where they're going to be even a week from now. So, and you know, relative to, and we'll get off the COVID thing, but to stay in a bubble is, is, is got to remember, it's just not eight guys. I think it's three to one or four to one. There's like four oh, yeah. support people for each guy. So you've got basically uh, a whole parade going on. This is a spectacle. It starts in Nice, France, and you've got, you've got two, uh, you've got probably two buses, you've got semi-trucks, you've got two trailing cars, you've got soignets, and what, what's a soignet, basically? Uh, soignet is like a team helper. Could be either, you know, they do all, the, they're, they're the ones that, that handle the feed zones. They're the guys, uh, guys in, and, and women who do the massage work at night. They do all the preparation of the food for the riders, for the feed, You've for the feeds and stuff. You've got team mechanics. Most of these teams are going to carry four mechanics four for a mechanics, race like the tour. Right. And you got the director. You've got the at manager. At least two directors at or At least three. sportif directors. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, you know, think about this. This is a spectacle. You've got all these parades of people. All right. And you got all the vehicles and you got the helicopters viewing from above. And this thing's moving around France. Now, it's not like, you know, we were talking about that the other day. It's not like it's... Uh, you know, speaking of the bubble concept, it's not like it's there's holiday inns and shit all over the place. No. You got little old tiny hotel rooms and stuff, and you got to squeeze all these people in there. Um, so it's no small, it's no small no. feat no. to to keep everything clean and sterile. And it's quite the it's quite the or- ordeal. You know, we were also talking about the fact that that's what makes it so cool. Is these are the things you want to watch for when you're watching. There's so much going on, and finally, the best part of the spectacle, this parade, this Tour de France. Is uh, is this idea that you're going to get to see from a helicopter and from all other angles as well? You're going to get to see the whole French countryside. You're going to see yeah. a thousand years of history unfold before your eyes. I mean, right? We that, oh no, the- it's 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 one of the you know I've been watching the tour since the mid '80s, and as I get older, I always I always mention to people it's like I have a lot of people tell me at the shop I don't watch it necessarily for the racing as much as I watch it for the scenery for the history, for the, you know, the castles, the chateaus, these little villages that are literally like almost caught in time. They're, they're, they're still in the 1800s or this, the 17th or 18th century. I mean, things have not changed that much. You get into the metro areas and you get into a few of the bigger cities. It's a very modern and very, very now. But when you get out into the French countryside, you're going by, you're seeing churches that could be, that had the Crusaders go by and heading to the Holy Lands. Exactly. I mean, it's really incredible. It, it, France is a beautiful country. You still have cobbles and roads that were built by, by the, the Romans. Romans. Absolutely. Um, and that's, you know. It's like, incredible. It's really awesome. One of the, that's what I, I, I tell people all the time. It's like, you know, we, we're very lucky now that we have, we have live coverage in America, which up until a few years ago, we did not have. I mean, I remember getting up at two or three o'clock in the morning and watching the CBS coverage, you know, of like one day recap of, of the 86 tour or whatever. Or trying to find it in print media, you know, it was, was it was that really hard. Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin then. Uh, it was still Phil. I don't. Yeah. Paul was racing then, or just shortly after his career. But it was it was really hard. It, we're very lucky now. Obviously, with the internet, the last few years you can stream you can stream daily live coverage. I mean, NBC Sports has daily live coverage on throughout the entire tour and simulcast. We, I'll probably watch it on NBC and NBC Gold. Because it'll be Robbie McEwen and those oh, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. and it'll it's, be a commercial great free. Coverage. And then I'll flip over and watch, uh, um, you know, Van Develde and uh, Bob Roll. Yeah, I'm not and, sure and, who uh, gonna be Phil Liggett. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be Chris Phil. Horner. I, th- I think it'll be probably Phil and Bob this year, as far as the the the, the blow by blow, as yeah. far as the race yeah. when it's on. But then also you got to the, the the great thing you got to understand with this: this is simulcast. This is broadcast live all over the world. Not just in France, not just in Europe. Every country in the world watches the tour. And, and, and there is pretty much people from all walks of life. How many languages do you have um, to speak? And, every, and every country that, watches That, that complicates cycling. the spectacle. Absolutely. Well, you could have a team. You could have 9, 10, 11 languages yeah. on one team, and you all got to communicate. Well, luckily now, you know, 
30 years ago, it was French. French was a big cycling language. Now, most of these teams, even though they may be from France or Spain or wherever, English is one of the normal. I mean, most of these guys can speak enough English to get by, uh, but also getting back to just the coverage. You know, you have people that listen to it still on the radio. You know, the Colombians and South Americans are cycling fanatics. I mean, yeah. they love this stuff. And, you know, just I've been lucky. You know, I, I stream some of the races in, in Italian and, and, and even Spanish and stuff. These guys go nuts. I mean, it's like watching yeah. European football. They go bananas. Agreed. And it's, it's awesome, you know. So, you know, OK, the Tour de France organization, obviously, uh, they've got to pick 22 teams. Because there's a lot of teams that want in this. This is yeah. that huge. Yeah. It's it's all about advertising yep. and money. So there are pro teams, right? And then there are pro continental teams. Yeah. Let's call them tier one and tier two. Yeah. So you're so for sure the major teams are going to get in, right? They're going to get well, the all bid. the world tour teams get an invite to the three grand tours. The eighteen or nineteen. I'm not 100 percent sure how many world tour teams there are, but but we'll we'll go over them in a bit. All the world tour teams get in, and, and then there's four. I believe there's four wild cards. Yeah. Four wild cards. And there, of course, in this case, they'd be French. Normally, normally, normally French. Um, when they you go know, to obviously, Italy, they'd be Italian. Yeah, you, and you, then you, when you go to Spain, you, they'd be Spanish. You, you, uh, you want that advertising space and stuff to go to the, um, the home country teams. I mean, at one time, up until probably the 50s or 60s, the Tour de France was a national team race. It wasn't trade teams or teams like we uh, have today. It right. was... Um, you know, it was national teams, you know, a French national team, British national team, whatever. So the French um, have won it 36 times, more than anybody, obviously. Yep. Okay. But they haven't won since... 85. 85. We were looking at that the other day, and that was Bernard. Bernard, you know, the Badger. And the Badger, let's mention really quickly, there are four dudes that have won the tour five, five times. times. And and the the main thing about like, Bernard, who know? Bernard, you know. There was uh, Jacques Anquetil and Eddie Merckx. Eddie Merckx. Now, Eddie goat. Merckx won it five in a row. No, Miguel Indurain won it five in a row. Okay. In the 90s. Um, and he's from Spain. And he's Merckx from is Spain from and Merckx was from Belgium. Jacques Anquetil was a Frenchman and Bernardino was a Frenchman. Okay. And, or is a Frenchman. Right. Um, and it's obviously, I mean, we'll, we'll just throw it out there. I mean, Armstrong had, had the wins taken from him, but Lance won seven tours. Lance won seven tours and, back um, to back. And right now, Chris Froome's got four, and he's not in it this he's year. He's not in it this year. And he probably, if he's going to win it, he's going to win it with the team he's going to next year, yeah. which is what? He's going to uh, the, the, new, the new World Tour team, the Israeli Startup Nation. Yep. Um, so he's, he's going to, to ISN next year, along with a bunch of other riders, and we'll touch on that later. So the French... Uh, you know, they, they, they've been, I've even said, you've seen it uh, mm. written and said that, that they go, we got to win one now or it's, it's, it's never. And so what the French organizers do of the Tour de France is they try to, they try to hedge their bet and try to get a Frenchman in there. So the way they do that is, first of all, right now, there's really no strong French time trial guys. Um, uh, I, I. I, I just think right now with the French, there's not a standout, you know, grand tour winner. There's these grand tours are so intense and so hard that literally right now in professional cycling, there's probably less than 10 guys worldwide that can legitimately win a grand tour. And to win a grand tour, you, you've got to be protected by a good team. You got to be on a you've good team. You got to be able to climb. Absolutely. And you've got to be able to and time you gotta be able to time trial. So I'm I'm suggesting that the French have never been had a strong time trialist. It, so that's why there's only one uphill time trial in this race. Well, and there's they no definitely, team trial trial. They definitely play the table a little bit. Obviously, they would love they would love a French winner, just as the same as the Italians want an Italian to win the Giro and the, the Spanish want a, 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 a Spain rider to win the, the Velta, obviously. But um you know, this year they they got a guy that could pull it off. They they have a rider, I think that that may be able to put it together. He was he was he was in a good position last year, possibly went down with a knee injury and had to pull out. So we'll get to him in a second. But I think there's a there's a good chance that we could see a Frenchman on the box, and they've had Frenchmen on the box. I mean, Roman Roman Bardet of of AG two R, yep, has gotten second and third the last couple of years. I mean, he certainly um, he's he a possibility. Climb. He climb. Yeah, he, he can do it. So. Um, this race is considered a general classification, a GC race. Yeah, GC race. Stage and, race. A stage race. And a uh, stage race. So it's a GC race. So it, what it means is that that it's the total elapsed time from yep. the minute you set foot into the race until the yeah, last. When you're racing. Right. Now, um, 
There's also what they do is they have time bonuses, right? At the end of every finishes, stage, yep. most finishes have a time bonus. So you can finish, and, and that adds excitement to each stage because mm-hmm. you yep. can grab the time. And this year, actually, what, seven or eight climbs, they have time bonuses as well. I think it's yeah. eight, five, and two seconds. So, and you got to figure that um, most of these races, at the end of it, after 21 days of racing, they're, they're within a minute or so yeah. those time bonuses are significant Absolutely. To, to take note of. Absolutely. Is that what makes each day exciting because you're like, okay, that's how they play in this. Now, um, okay, so we already said that, um, you know, generally out of the uh, 22 uh, or out of the 21 stages, uh, you got how many flat stages roughly and then how many climbing stages and then one time trial on the 20th day? I didn't write it all down. Uh, the first week is going to be brutally hard this year. Um they try to mix it up. They always try to give the sprinters at least four or five true sprint days. Uh, they try to mix it up. I mean, a little bit for the breakaways and the rollers and the bigger guys, the, the, the workers that can get away in a break, or and, and the pure climbers. I mean, even in the first week, even this the first stage, knees to knees, is 156 kilometers, is pretty rolling. It, it's got some hills in it. It's got some climbs in it, but I think it comes back. Because, you know, it's odd this year. Normally, the tour starts with a prologue or some kind of time trial where – you kind of know who's going to be in the yellow jersey to start. The yellow jersey, agree. You know, the, yeah. the, the, the man that wears the yellow jersey, the Milan John, um, is the the leader of the race. So this year, and and as this has happened in many other years, it's it's a regular stage, and, and this year it'll probably be a sprint. So it gives some riders that normally probably don't have a great chance of getting into the yellow jersey a chance to be in that yellow jersey. So the first stage in Nice on Saturday, Nice to Nice is going to be. Very aggressive, very hard, very fast. Um, the sprinters teams, and there's quite a few teams here that are bringing good sprinters to this race, are going to want to win that stage to get the because one day, even one day in the yellow jersey can make your whole career. It, it's that defining, and it's great for these teams. It's it, a lot it is of press. that defining. Great work. Yep. So out of the uh, 22 teams, um, we've got uh, basically seven, 17 or 18 riding on Shimano component tree. Is that correct? I believe so. Yep. Two, two on SRAM. And two on camping. And two on camping. Yep. Okay. So um, now, I think we decided the other day when we were talking that there's only three teams that are going to be on rim brakes. And I think it was uh, Ineos, Yumbo Visma, and AGR2. AG2. Yeah. Now, what's what's the strategy there? Um, I think part of it is ease of, of quick maintenance or quick... Um, replacing of wheels in the mountains. I mean, the teams that are on disc brakes are using through axles, which are a little more complicated to take out by the rider and the mechanic. Whereas AG2R, Ineos, and Yumbo Visma are still using rim brakes with a quick release. And the riders are all riding basically the same wheels and whatnot. So if they have a teammate with, they can swap wheels out real quick. But I found out that Yumbo Visma is also using basically a raw carbon frame to lose to drop some weight. And also using uh, the rim brakes to drop some weight. They are switching bikes next year. They're changing bike manufacturer for 2021. Now there um, is there is a team limit. So there is they a weight get limit. weighed every day. Every day, and it's 15 pounds. I don't know how many kilograms yep. that is, but roughly. Yeah. So what's the deal? So if if they're slightly under 15, what do they do? Uh, they got to add weight to them. They're adding weight to them now with the with the with the current with power meters and everything else these guys have on their bikes, and these bikes are light it's very easy to, to be right at the weight limit without having to add weight anymore. Especially now with if, with almost everybody using the disc brakes, they add just a slight amount of weight. It's really, for these guys, they're not, I don't believe they're really noticing it. Um, so it's it, it's a moot point. By next year, they'll all be on disc so brakes. So I, I wanted to, to, to break into the team cars thing, but I'm going to gradually break into that. So there's two team cars yep. for, for every group of eight guys. Yep. And um, so the situation is these guys are in parade formation and they're following. And so you'll have guys that'll drop back, right? Yep. And they'll they are they're workers, they're domestiques. Yep. And when they drop back, what's likely to happen? What happens there? Well, when a, when a, when a rider would go back to the first, the, each team has two following cars. The the first car is going to be a mechanic in the back seat, usually on the right side. Um, the you know, and two directors or VIP or team owner or whatever in the front. It's always going to be a director driving. He has radio communications with the riders. He has radio communication with the with the officials, with the uh, with the UCI officials and whatnot. Plus, also has phone and uplink. They have TVs in the cars. They're watching the live feed, so they know what's going on. When a rider drops back to a team car, most of the time he's dropping back to get feed, to get bottles, to get food, 
for the the team leader or for the other riders. What's the sticky water bottle phenomena? <laughs> uh, that's when, you know, your last bottle before, when you're loaded up, before you go back, I mean, you're going to kind of hang on to a bottle for a couple seconds longer and that driver's going to accelerate a little bit and give you that whip into the field. And it makes a big, especially in the mountains and stuff, the, the commissars normally look the other way with the sticky bottle. Got it. But then there's also a following car that follows back behind all that group. There's always two cars on the road for every team that if the lead car, say one of their riders is up the road in a break by five minutes, well, the commissar will direct that car to go up and follow the break. So there's always a car following the Peloton, the large group of riders that are doing whatever they're doing, chasing or whatever. So the guys are not left without a car. And if a guy gets dropped or whatever, he'll come back. He'll usually load up on bottles and food and stuff. And as he gets dropped behind the team cars that he's okay for the day. And also when, when a break gets caught, a lot of times before they go back into the field, they'll load up. You'll see that, say there's a breakaway away for a couple hundred or, or, or a hundred kilometers or something, and they're going to get caught and they're going to get caught with maybe 30 kilometers left. So they'll hit the car before they go back and load up on bottles and food and stuff. And as they make their way back through the field, they're handing that out to their teammates. And, you know, driving these cars is uh, is a pretty, pretty a testy situation, yeah. right? Well, like, most, most of these guys are ex, almost all the directors at this level are ex riders or ex pros. Now there is Mavic neutral support yes. and they're up there. So if you're up the road, uh, usually you'll get your team car to come around yeah. and support you. Yeah. But then again, if you're in an uphill finish or whatever, or when you're coming in close to the finish line, uh, you got to figure out how to get that out of the freaking way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, there's a lot of shit going on. And these are the types of things that, you know, I urge you guys to take note of because it's it that's going on behind the scenes. It won't necessarily be called out by the announcers, but you can see. Yeah, you'll how, see how what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you'll see. So, uh, which, which reminds me of a story I was telling John the other day. So, Tour de Gretna a year ago or whatever, uh, I was in my group and uh, we were going up a climb and I was with my teammate Brad Ober and he flats. We had rim brakes. So, luckily, he goes, hey, can you give me a wheel? I'm like, yeah. So, I we both stopped the side, quick switch the wheels, just like that. Rim brakes, obviously. He's back in the Peloton. He ends up podium or close to it. Um, so what's the deal on that? If you're a teammate, you can you can you're, you're good to go. If you're if your teammates on any given team, if you're if your teammate needs a, a, a spare bike, your bike or a wheel or whatever, that's no problem. You cannot give equipment to a member of another team. If if you know that might be your friend from training or the guy that lives in the apartment next to you or whatever. You cannot give him a wheel. I mean, you'll be fined. I mean, you can give it to him, but you're going to be fined and you run the risk of being kicked out of the race. You run the risk of being DQ'd. Got it. So, so, um, all right. So I uh, just want to throw this quick in here before I forget. This year is also the 50 year anniversary of BMX. And I know that you, you were born and bred, Josh, you were too, um, on BMX, but that's significant because a lot of kids and a lot of people still get their start. And BMX, is that correct? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I I would I would guess that starting Saturday in Nice, there's probably 25, 30 guys in the pro peloton that got their start racing BMX in Europe or wherever, which is it's really cool. I mean, you know, the the you know, racing BMX and riding BMX in the neighborhood, whatever, and maybe racing at the track are probably the two greatest um the the greatest foundation in beginning to get to this next level. So um I know you. We talked about this too, and I know you do a great job in explaining it. So let's talk. When you see all the riders, you know you're first looking at it, so why are they riding so close like that? What's the big deal? Why are they being protected by their teammates? And explain the draft advantage. It's it's significant. I mean, when you're at a group of 170 some riders, when you're in the middle of that group, you're using probably 50 percent less energy than the guys at the front. It's, you're just, and you're, pulled you're just getting sucked along, and and they're going very fast. I mean, these guys average at average stage speed on the flats is somewhere between 25 and 30 mile an hour. It's it's yeah. significant. And even if you're in a breakaway of three or four, um, they'll rotate through. You'll see these guys pull through and off, and pull through and off, and and they go whichever way the wind is going. I know you're going to the echelon next. Echelon when, next. When, when you see a group of four or five off, which is the average break size at the tour. I mean, these teams watch who goes up the road. They don't let anybody go up the road. Everybody go up the road. But early on, probably starting stage three and four, you'll start to maybe see some breaks get away. Certainly, you'll see breaks get away from the get-go, but they're always brought back. But these guys will rotate through. A guy is only going to spend 30, 40, 50 seconds at the front. He pulls through. Well, the guys behind him are getting... A, 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 not as much of a significant uh, advantage as you would in a bunch, 
But when you're behind a guy, you're still saving 20, 30, 40% in some cases. And, and, it's, and, 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 and that, you're going to pull off whichever way the wind is coming on your shoulder. So if the right. wind is coming on your, if the wind is coming on your, on your left, you're going to pull to your left and go down the backs, you know, riders coming up through here, you're going to go down and you actually give them riders a little bit of a break from the wind, you know? Yeah. And we were we talked about getting in on the echelon thing. I don't know how we, we'll probably see some echelon, especially when we get into the middle of the race in, in Massey Central and stuff, depending on how the wind and stuff is. But I don't, it remains to be seen. You know, I think maybe on one of the later shows, yes. we'll talk about echelon. And and when stuff. you guys are out there watching, it's always interesting to note that um, when these breaks happen, there is always a new political alliance that forms. Absolutely. I, it, you know, it could be different. So one guy, one time, whoever you're on the break with is your enemy. And the next time he's your friend, depending on your, your team position and so on and so forth. And I will say that not only echelon relative to the wind and you, and you do that, but on cornering. So like if you're going around a left-hand corner, you want to just be over to the right just a little yeah. bit. And you would think, what's the big deal? But like over 150 kilometers yeah, yeah. or something, so it's all, and it's 100 all turns, yeah. right? That's just a little bit of fraction. Yep. And you know, uh, Ineos, I think, was the first one when they were Sky. They were the first one to say, "We talked about this too: marginal gains." Yeah. That you would think, what's the big deal? It's like just get out a little bit. That's a, just a tiny marginal gain. And if you can get a marginal gain. Uh, there and a marginal gain in your uniform and a marginal gain in your helmet Everything. in terms of air and all so on up. and so on. It all so adds up. It all adds up to that difference of 30 or 40, 50 seconds, which wins the tour or doesn't well, win the tour. Well, and, and, and again, you're also all about saving watch. You're all about saving all the, the every little bit of energy because every day, I mean, this is three weeks and even they still ride on their rest days. You're still going to go out and do two, three hours on a rest day. So it's all, you know, what these guys do, the old saying in cycling is if you can sit, you sit. If you can lay, you lay down. Yeah. You don't do any standing around. These Thank guys you, will Darren be, Benson, right? yeah, these guys will not be, well, he lays around a lot. No, yeah. but, um, but all joking aside, I mean, it, it, it is all about saving as much energy because you never know when you're going to need it. I mean, some of these teams um, are going to be, especially the teams that are going to be controlling the race, teams that are going after the different jerseys. They're going to be really, you know, their team workers are going to be punching in and going to work every day. And it's a lot of work. I mean, it's what they do. It's their job. So um, let's go over the jerseys real quick. Obviously, the GC jersey is the yellow jersey. Yep. And that's general time. And you wear yep. it. In general classification. Right. And you wear it until you don't wear it. Yeah, until, until you somebody lose, else until you lose it to the race lead. Right. And um, the green jersey. Sprinter's jersey. And you determine that by sprinter it's points. All points. Right. And you'll see that along the race course. Yep. And then you got the polka dot jersey, and that mountain is mountain jersey. That's the mountain jersey. That's the and best that's all climber. points on the on the climbs. I mean, even I'm not sure what they're giving out on the first day, but it, you know, even your small, you know, if it's a categories climb, there's there's five categories. There's a uh, cat four, cat three, cat two, cat one, and an oars category, which is beyond category HC. Yeah, there's that's the highest hardest stuff to say the least. Um, there's points on every one of them, and obviously, the harder the climb, the more points you get. And then uh, the other, the last jersey is the is the white jersey for the best young rider. And lately, uh, we've had some young winners of the tour. Certainly last year, he also held the white jersey. So, and I suspect that this year, I'd be very surprised if the winner of the race doesn't hold the white jersey. Also. So you can hold multiple jerseys. Yes, but absolutely. But you choose not to wear them. No, no. So the what do you do if, you, if you're holding two jersey. or three jerseys? They go to the next it? guy on the, on the points. Okay. So if you if you like last year, um, Egan Burnell also held the white jersey. Well, whoever was second place on that classification, which it. goes by time, by the way, the, the white jersey goes by time. And in last year, I think the, the next place guy so, down was down by minutes. So let me check some logistics on that. So if you're all of a sudden, if your team, you still have your team logo. Plus on. you have team classification too, which is designated by number and helmets. You'll see if, if you're new to this, you'll see like a certain team all wearing like yellow helmets the first couple of days or something. Yeah. They'll all have yellow helmets on. That's their leading the team classification, which is taken on, I believe, the third or fourth rider that crosses the line every day. Yeah. And right. that's, you know, and again, these are all prizes too. I mean, the 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 winner gets 300 plus thousand uh, and the jer each individual jersey, I think, is at least, I think, 30, and then 40 each K. stage, each stage has some Every cash. stage has awards. I mean, even, even your smallest sprint stage and even smallest mountains all have a cash payout of thousand euros. So or that's whatever. the incentive for a team to work together Absolutely. because you can make a lot of money yeah. over and above their regular. Win winning salaries. teams take a lot of money out of this race, uh, to say the least. And um it's it it is it is about advertising dollar, but it is about, you know, the guys that race this race take home a lot of money. So isn't there a trailing 
printing truck or whatever, because these jerseys got to be different all the time. So how they do they make them up at the end of each stage? Right. Yep. Isn't that amazing? Ready to go. Think about and and that. you get With more the logos on everything. It. Everything's ready to roll. They, they get a new, you get fresh yellow jerseys every day. You'll see these guys. You'll see it when you watch the coverage in the background. If guy wins the first stage and takes, you'll see him just autographing tons of jerseys. Well, they all go to VIPs and local dignitaries, whatever. Yeah. But they, uh, yeah, it, this, the, the Tour de France is a well-oiled machine. It, it runs, it's, you're, you're not just riders. It has it's a life, also life of its own. Life of its own, village of its own. This year, I don't know how they'll do it with the COVID and the social distancing, but you have a lot of, um, you have an awful lot of journalists that cover this, both, you know, media, you know, both video and, and, and TV journalists, plus print journalists, the whole nine yards. There's a lot of people follow this race. So last but not least, Lanton Rouge. That's, What's that's, that all about? that's a, an award given at the end of the race for the guy that finishes last. And um, you get, you don't really get an award other than I think uh, I'm not sure there's even a deviation or number or anything, but there are guys that fight for that. I mean, normally after the tour, there's post tour crits throughout Europe and they pay a lot of money. I mean, if, if you won the yellow Jersey or the polka dot or the green or the white or whatever, you get invited to these village races, Kermeses, whatever in Belgium, Northern France. And they're usually fixed races per se. Like if you're the winner of the tour, you're going to win your big post tour criterion that they're asking you to come to and some of these guys make a lot of money doing the, the post, you know, and a guy that's going to get invited also is Lantern Rouge. The guy finished last. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean he's not a good bike rider. He's an awesome bike rider. He just happens to maybe finish three and a half hours down. And, and you know, also it's significant to note that when you got 160, 76 riders starting, um, that's going to dwindle down every day. So pay attention to that. Because if you've got a strong team, oh, yeah. you, you don't want to have to go to well, seven to six riders. It's something I thought about the day riding into the shop. Um, you know, something I need to mention is the fact that you want to keep your team intact. And that's part of the problem, I think, that why they maybe looked at this two strikes with the COVID. I mean, you start, you know, there's going to be crashes the first couple of days. I mean, these, these riders are going to be very nervous. There's a lot of speed, a lot of very close quarters in the bunch. There's going to be crashes and you get hurt. I mean, you go down with what we wear on the road and stuff. There's no, there's zero protection. It's easy to break collarbones, break wrists, break bones, whatever. Some guys soldier on, but for the most part, you're done. And if you start, if a team like, you know, using a team like Ineos, um, Ineos Grenadier, which they picked up a sponsor, um, Ineos What's is What's up now, with that, dude? Yeah, they're, they're they're making a, a British UK SUV that looks like a Land Rover. The Brits love their they Land Rover. They need another one, right? They need another they, one, man. Do they even they, have off-road shit in Oh, yeah, there's... Um, yeah, we could talk for hours on that. But <laughs> anyways, with, with a team like Ineos, if they lose two, three guys the first week, they're in trouble. I mean, you need your men. You need your guys around you. Because everyone that comes to the tour has a job. There's, you know, you have a climbing team that might be all little itty bitty, flat, you know, little lightweight climbers. But there's always going to be a couple big guys on that team to tow things along on the flats till they get to the hills. Everyone has a job. Nobody comes to the tour by accident. Nobody is there just as a... You know, because every one of these teams will have two or three alternates that are basically there in Nice. Yeah. That if somebody goes down today or even tomorrow morning, they're going to get the call up. I mean, they're allowed to start with. I mean, the riders. strategy is incredible. There's a oh, lot of thinking. Every day, every day. A lot day. of thinking goes into this. These directors are. And, and it are, changes every day. Every so day, every hour. Every, every day. Within every hours, hour they've got to make changes yeah. on the fly. They all start out with a plan in the morning, but that plan could change five minutes into the stage. You, you just don't know. All right. So let's go through some of these teams. Yep. All right, AGTR Lomni on Dial. Yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, their equipment. They're riding Eddie Merckx. Yep. They're going to go with rim brakes, and um, they're on Shimano. Yep. Um, who you got on there? You got Villamuz, uh, Nason. You got Roman Bardet. You have Latour. Uh, Pierre Latour. You have Oliver, uh, Oliver Nielsen from Classic Sky from Belgium. You have uh, Clement, Ventator, uh, Clement Vent Venturini. Um, and I got to put a disclaimer in there. I'm, I'm Pennsylvania <laughs> Dutch. I'm not. We're going to really butcher Rightly some of these so. names. So we apologize to anyone. We don't want to offend anybody. But uh, we're definitely going to tear up some of these names because these are mostly all Europeans and South Americans, Spanish, Italians. And I'm just, I'm going to butcher them. It is what it is. But AGTR is a great team. AGTR has been around a long time. I kind of dig their brown kit. Everybody hates it. Um, yeah. They, they ride Eddie Merck's bikes, the GOAT, you know, the greatest yeah. of all time. Their, their bikes are, are really sick. So really um, cool. basically, do you think Romain Bardet has a chance as a Frenchman, as a GC, um, or is would, that team too weak? Or are they no, just going no, for he's stage? right in the sweet spot. He's 29. He's got three tour stage wins. He's been around a long time. He's gotten a second and a third. He's gotten, you know, he's held polka dot jersey. I'm not 100% sure he's ever been in yellow. 
But he's definitely a guy that I would put certainly in the top 10 and possibly the top five this year. No, that's a sure. pretty bold statement. Yeah. All right, uh, let's go to the next team. Astana and their founder was Alexander Vinikovrov. Yeah. They're out of Kazakhstan. Um, they're on Williers uh, with Shimano. Um, okay, who do they got? They got basically, they got Lutsenko, Lopez. The, they, it, they, yeah, they got a solid team. I mean, they have um, is Gary, uh, yeah, the, the is a Gary brothers Sanchez. They have Luis Leon Sanchez, who's thirty six years old, just won the Spanish National Road Race last Sunday. They're going to be. You're going to see them in a lot of breakaways. They wear like a really distinctive sky blue jersey. You know, I'm I, I like Astana. They're they're a really uh, they're an interesting team. They uh, they're very animate. They're in a lot of breakaways. You're going to see their riders up the road a lot, and they certainly are looking for stage wins. The One stage- of what we think five brothers uh, pairs. Yep. So you got Sagan, the Izagares, the Quintanas, the Nibblies, and the, maybe the Mosses. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of brother. There's a lot of brother gangs. So that, what's that tell you about? Because it's a way of life. It's you a way start, of life. It's you family. start cycling. Like, it's a family. family. You start cycling when you're uh, you're nearly can walk, and then then you carry it throughout your whole life. Absolutely. Okay, uh, that's Astana. Uh, so, do you think they have a GC chance? Or? Nah, they're here for stage wins. They're here. I think. I think they're going to throw everything behind Jakob Fulsinger in the Giro coming up in, yeah, in, in, makes in sense. late September. And he he won Lombardia. He right? won Lombardia a couple weeks ago. He's a strong one day rider, but he also is very good. I think he's had some top fives in, in Grand Tours. He certainly is a guy who they, they'll throw everything into their Giro team. I believe because I think they have a shot to win it. There's a Canadian on their team, Hugo Hurley, who just. Um, you know, it's kind of cool to see some North Americans in there. They have, they have Canadian on that team who's a strong rider. So I expect to see them up the road in most, in, in especially multiple rider breaks of, ride, of, of, of of breaks of three, four, five riders. I think you'll see Astana riders in there. Cool. So now we go to Bahrain McLaren. Now uh, they're on Meridia or Merida and Shimano. And um, I guess I I forgot that Mer- Merida Merida owns Specialized. Yeah, they're the I mean, big they're ass a company, huge company, man. huge company. They're they're one of the largest bike manufacturers in the world. They just announced, I think, in the last thirty six hours that McLaren is is leaving as a title sponsorship with that team, which a team is basically sponsored by the royal family of Bahrain. Uh, McLaren has to pull out. They they did they, they lost a lot during the, the the COVID crisis, and they you know they just can't justify spending the kind of money they spend here. They're an interesting team. I mean, they're they're one of my outside GC teams. They have Mikel Landau on that team who pre- who previously rode for both it, it, Sky Elios and also rode for Movistar. This is probably his first chance to be like a legit team leader it, yeah. where everybody's going to be working for him. They bring a really solid squad. They got the Walt Poles. They got Caruso. Uh, they got the sprinter, Sonny Cabrelli. Yep. He's still got some legs. Absolutely. Uh, who else they got on there? Bill Bubba, uh, uh, that met uh, Marab. Yeah, they got a guy that can descend like like a stone. They left Mark Cavendish at home. I mean, it it, it kind of sucks uh, to see Cav at home, but I honestly, after watching Cav in the Tour of Wallonia and some of the the the, I think it's the only race he's did since coming back from the COVID. Uh, he just didn't look good, and they're not gonna these guys the, these directors and these people in charge know their numbers. They know where these guys are fitness wise. Cavendish is coming back from a from a really dark uh, couple years. I expect to Epstein see him. Bar. Yeah, I expect to see him on one of the upcoming Virus. the other races. But I, I, I I'm, I'm going to call it right now that I'll be very, very surprised if Cavendish wins any more World Tour races. I mean, nah, it just, it's a shame. It sucks because he's he got won, like 36. He's won 30 tour stages. He's only second, I believe, the Mercs. Uh, he only needs a couple more to beat Mercs or tie Mercs's record. But I just don't see it happening. It, it sucks, but it is what it is. But they're they're a really strong team. I'm going to be very curious to see how Landa does in the mountains with probably very little support with his best tour finish has been a fourth. I think he can equal that. Um, he's definitely one of my top five, probably top five, top six guys. All right, let's go to Boro Hansgrohe. Um, specialized Shimano. Yeah, German um, team, home of uh, Peter Sagan, one, one of the greatest of this generation. Multiple you think he's champion. going for the green jersey this year? Yeah, I think he will. They just announced, uh, they just announced that one of the other riders that I thought was really going to be targeting the green jersey looks like he's just going to be going after stage wins. Now, if he gets four or five stage wins, he'll probably automatically get the green. But Sagan's won the green jersey a record number of times. Um, but they got a, it's not really the Sagan show anymore. I think Bora Hansgrove's coming in here as a legit GC team. They have uh, Emmanuel, Bookman, they have Emmanuel Danny Bookman. Oss. They got Felix Starshartner. They got Max Schmeckman. These guys have all had Kamna, Postelberger. It's a it's a it's a strong team. Very strong team. So I'm going to be very curious to see where they end up the first week. 
because there's a lot of climbing in the first week. And I expect to see, I think Bora will certainly put a rider in the top 10. Whether or not they go much higher than that, we'll see. I mean, their, their, their best placing was it was it was a fourth last year with Bookman. I think he is an outside shot in getting on the box this year. He's relatively young. I mean, he's, he started, this will be his fifth tour start. He um, He's definitely an outside guy for the top three. I'm not putting him there in my pick, but he could get there easily. This is a very strong team unit that will, you'll see Sagan go back and get bottles and stuff. He works for the team. Oh, that's, you know? that's a great point. Yep. CCC team. They're on Giants and Shimano and uh, uh, what do you think? Well, they got Zacharin. Z- Zacharin. Yeah. Is he a GC? Z- Zacharin. I mean, he's really never lived up. His best finish has been a ninth. He's never really lived up to his billing. He's decent in the mountains. If he shows up in good form, and that's a big question mark for a lot of these guys, if he shows up where he could be, uh, he could be a top 10 guy. CCC is going away at the end of this year. So the other thing I want to mention is, the, the the current status of world tour of cycling is there's a lot of guys out of contract this year, a lot of guys, and this is their job. So you got to get a contract and this is the world stage. You're in front of all these directors of these other teams. So you certainly want to put a show on, you want to get out and breaks. You want to have a good showing that to, to maybe that director is going to get a hold of your agent or talk to you directly and say, Hey, you know, we have some room and we'd really like you to come, you know, we want to give you a contract for next year. So a lot of these riders, um, are certainly definitely a team like CCC. They're going to be very animate. They got Mickey Shaw in there, big Van strong Amermont, roller there. Greg Van Aramat, the Demarkey. current current Olympic champion from Brazil, is in there. He'll he'll be very noticeable. With and then his you gold got helmet. a sprinter. You got Trentine. He still got some yeah, legs. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to be they're going to be up the road in a lot of breaks. They're definitely looking for some stage wins, which would make the whole year for them. They're they're, they're a Polish team. Um, maybe early yellow j- jersey with Greg Van Aramat. He's had it before. Belgian rider. So we'll see. He looks like he's on pretty good form. He rode well in some of the uh, early first day, you know, one day classics that were just recent. So I expect them to be um, very animate because of the reasoning said, you know. Got it. Kofidis. French uh, team. DeRosa Campy. Yeah. Uh, um, who's their GC guy? Is it? Uh, they don't Mar- really have one. Uh, Mar- probably, probably, probably Gilliam Mar- Martin. Yeah. A Frenchman. He's He wrote a really good Criterium Delphine two weeks ago. And he won it. No, he didn't win it. He was, oh, uh, that was second Martinez. or third. Martinez. Yeah, he was yeah, second yeah. or third. Good point. I yeah. believe, but they have a they have a strong team. You're going to see Kofidis up in just about every break. That's going to be kind of the normal place. Harada, La- Christopher Laporte. Yeah. Does uh, Viviani have any any legs? Um, on? you know, he's an outside chance, and even on the first day, I mean, if he would end up in that yellow jersey just for a day for Kofidis, it would make their whole season. You know, and there there's a they're a solid team, and they're going to be looking for stage wins, and they're going to be in a lot of breakaways, but. Gil Martin, I think, will come into his own this year, and I'd be very surprised if he's not a top 10 rider. He was 12th last year, so he'll be there. He'll be there or thereabouts. Dekunic, quick step. Uh, great Belgian team. This works. Tarmac. Um, that's their ride. Yep. Shimano. Um, you know, that's that new, like, point point eight kilograms out of the box. That's that new new wave Brand carbon. Brand new bike. They just, uh, they just released that a few weeks ago. Incredible team. The Kunic Quick Step is managed, owned by by Patrick Lefevier. He's very outspoken Belgian. They're the current number one UCI team in the world. They probably won, I think, up until, I think as of today, they probably won 24, 25 races already this year. And if we would have raced straight through without COVID, that would be in the 50s. So they got Stybar. They got- Nah, Stybar's out. Stybar uh, has a knee injury. They got got Youngles. Yep. Uh, and of course, a Remco Evenpool. He's out. He broke. His, he's out, but he broke man, he's, he's super. Oh, he's awesome. I mean, like the, I always ask you, Evenpool or Vanderpool? Uh, uh, they're both going to be incredible. They're both. They're gonna both going to be incredible. Well, you got Julian Alphilippe, who who really was awesome last year. He ended up. He's fifth. a great French hope, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's going to be very animate this year. I think they're going to kind of take him off his leash and let him run again and go for stage wins. Incredible descender. One of the strongest guys out there. Casper Asgreen can climb. Yeah, they, well, he's a, he just won the national championship at Denmark. You got Sam Bennett, who I'm Sam now Bennett. I'm now going to pick his green jersey. I think Sam Bennett will win the green jersey. He's never won a stage. He certainly wants to win a tour stage or two or three this year. The dude is super strong. He's come back off the break with the COVID, really riding well. Um, you know, they, they they brought in, they have a really solid team. I expect to see Bob Youngles up there looking for a stage win. Yep. They have just an incredibly strong, So they're one of the team. one of the world tour teams that have a big budget, right? Yeah. They're, you know what that is roughly? Uh, I think the Kuna Quick Step's somewhere in the 20 million range. And who's the king right now? It's Enios with 40, Ineos 40 with, million. Uh, north of 40 million budget. 
And that's that's a lot of money. Why to do spend they call cycle. Quick Step the Wolf Pack? Ah, uh, they're just uh, they're like brothers, man. They they cover each other, and and, and I think it's a very uh, very tight team. You know, they're 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 one of my favorite teams. I you know they're Belgian, and 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 I really like what uh, Patrick's done with that team. He's very outspoken. I expect to see Remco Evenepoel win a lot of races in his career. It's going to be really fun watching it N- for the nice next ten fifteen years. You're better than Bernil on that. Uh, you know, I I. I, I practiced EF education first pro cycling, uh, Jonathan Vodders, uh, out of Boulder, Colorado. They're running a Cannondale super six Evo Shimano. Um, well, you got your GC guys, what Rigoberto or ran yeah, out of Columbia. Know, they're, they're an interesting team this year. They're, they're another team that's always kind of just there, thereabouts. I mean, I think, uh, Rigoberto is certainly probably their protected GC rider. He's, he's been on the box in a second in, in 2017, so yeah, we're gonna get back to EF Pro Cycling here. We got some stuff to talk about with them, but I'm gonna take a quick break here. Unlike Lance Armstrong, I'm gonna do it in the middle. I wanna pay homage to our sponsors here. So it's Lupine Lighting Systems, and that is LupineNorthAmerica.com and Guarchati Bicycles, that's GuarchatiUSA.com, and Deluxe Bikes, that's downtown Lebanon, and Josh Zaring Studios. Thank you. Okay. EF Pro Cycling. I want to talk about them because they got some Americans on there. TJ Van Garden. What yeah. do you think? TJ Van Garden, I think, will finally become what he's always has, what I've always considered him like a super domestique. I think you see TJ go after a stage win possibly this year. Um, he's done a lot of tours. He's a veteran. He knows what he's doing. He'll be a very valued team rider to help um, Rigoberto and, and Martinez. You also have another American in Nelson Palace. So that's two Americans in the squad, which is cool. They're they're a you know they're they're a solid team. I mean, I'm I'm you know I'm not going to sit well, here and got, say they got they got Alex House too, but he's not on the squad. No, no, but, no. But he'll he's, do he's, he'll he's, more than likely do another it, American. He'll do Italy or Spain. He does a lot of gravel stuff in that, which is really cool. I mean, the team's very diverse. They do a lot of different things in the sport. They have a a, a few tour debutants this year. They're actually bringing three guys that have never done the tour before. So that'll be. That'll be pretty cool. I mean, I think there's three guys in that team that have never done the tour before. So those guys are going to want to make a name for themselves and get out there and be seen. So it'll be pretty cool. Cool. Groupama, FDJ, That's they're riding LaPierre's, Shimano. Uh, and of course, the great French hope this year, uh, Thibaut Pino, GC guy. Yeah, right? I mean, think? I'm, you know, I, I don't want to jump ahead, but I'm, I, I thought about this riding home today and, and I got to. You know, I got to give him the box. I got to give him an outside shot at, at the top three. I know you're going to ask me when this is all set and done who my three are. I think he was so let down from last year. He was sitting in a really good spot last year. He had the knee injury. Yeah. Um, had to pull out. He's been on the box before in 2014. That entire team is built around um, Tibu Pino winning this race or doing getting on the box. I mean, they got they got Stephen Kong, they got R- Millard, they got Gaudo, they got William Bonnet, they got uh, they have a Sebastian. Solid, right? They're bringing a yeah. solid team, a real good overall. So the only solid thing team. I got against Pino is that Dauphiné was such a tough race, and he was he was fighting so hard every day. Yeah, but that was two weeks ago. So he's going to be this. He's French. And this is everything to these Frenchmen. I mean, this is every this is the this is the World Series, the Super Bowl. Their manager is Mark Matteo. I mean, he's won Perry Roubaix. He's he's a crazy man. He carries on like a lunatic in the team car. I mean, I, I I've never been a huge Groupana FDJ uh, fan, but I'm they're starting to grow on me a little bit. I kind of dig their kit and stuff. So they're um, fair enough. I, I give I you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know you'll hear what I have to say at the end. All right, Israel Startup Nation. Um, yeah, this this is an interesting team, right? They're they're financed. How are they financed? Uh, I believe their owner, their their money man is 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 a fairly wealthy Canadian. Um, they they're one of my new favorite teams for this year. I mean, I really like the way they race. They're riding factor bikes with Shimano components. Those factor bikes look good this year, actually. Yeah, they look sharp. They're, they're, they're neat colors. The white and the light blue are really cool. They have very good team management. They they moved up this year um, into Pro Tour from Continental. There's uh, the first Israeli cyclist is starting this year. That's Guy Naive, Naive or something along those right, lines. Right, I, mean, right. I mean, I mean, I expect Guy to see Naive, these guys yeah. in breaks. They got Niels Pollard, who's leaving this year, going to I'm not 100. I think he's going to Bora, but they got a solid team. I mean, well, Dan certain, Martin, right? They got Dan Martin, who's an outside guy. Definitely, I think, you know, he broke something two weeks ago. He's definitely coming in, maybe a little light 
But that said, uncharted territory, man, guys might come in as long as he doesn't lose too much time in the first week. He could be there, thereabouts in the last Greipel, couple. Hermans, Rick Zobel. Yeah. No, nah, Rick Zobel's not coming. All right. But, no, but they're, they're, they're a solid team. They're, they're going to be, you no know, Daniel Navarro, he's not coming either. All right. But that said, stages. Expect to see them up the road a lot. Expect to see them going out stage and make their whole year if they want to stage. Plus, this is where Chris Froome's going next year. This is where Daryl Impey's going. Um, That's exciting. They're That's spending exciting. a lot of money. They're they're going to be they're so, gonna be a team to watch. So Greipel's probably got a, got to be in him left. Maybe he's got one. Win. That would be great to see Greipel, the old man, the gorilla, win win a stage. Greipel, but I also the gorilla. think um, at his age, he's not going to mix it up with these young guys that are fearless. He's just not going to. All right, Lotto Sudal, um, Ridley's, Campy, yeah, Campy, Campy on the Ridley's. Uh, what are you looking at? Degen call. DeGent, okay. Yeah, Thomas De- DeGent. DeGent is, uh, for all of you folks out there, he's like the classic breakaway guy. He hates yeah. riding with people. Yeah, no, he's he's either at he's the front in, or the he's back. Or the front or the back. Yeah. Uh, you got Gilbert. Um, you know, uh, who else you got on there? Who, you get, uh, and you got the sprinter. You've got yeah, Caleb Ewing. Yeah, you got Caleb Ewing. You got the little guy, little Australian, little thunder from, from Mitchell down Scott. under. Yeah. Um, he, I, uh, up until a day or two ago, I expected him to be absolute green jersey winner. If, if he if he could get through the whole race, he's not so good going uphill, but he's furious, crazy at the finish. Um, but he claims he's just going after stage wins. So we'll see. I think well, that'll change real quick. I had some notes here. Then we were talking about the five monument races. And there are Flanders, per, uh, Perry roubaix Lombardi, Milan-San Remo, Liege-Bastogne-Liege. And uh, I think Merck's won them all. But why were we talking about it? Was it well, Gil- Gilbert? Philippe, Philippe Gilbert, who's in the swan song of his career, 37 years old, he lives in Monaco. He's in the Nice area. I expect to see him be very animate here in the first week of the race. He's consummate team, consummate team rider. Will do whatever he's got to do for the team. He's won four of the five monuments. The only monument he has not won has been Milan San Remo. I, uh, you know, with as messed up as things were this year, he probably wasn't going to be in contention for that. But um, you know, I still think he might have it in him. It would be awesome to see the guy's been a world champion. The guy's won. Every big race there is to win. I mean, he's he's won every short stage race and every one day race that's worth anything. I mean, him winning Roubaix and Flanders the other year was just incredible. Incredible. You know, they have a couple. They have a couple options there. I mean, maybe DeGent goes on an early raid and gets a lot of mountain points and decides to go after another polka dot jersey, which is very possible. So I expect to see Lotto Sedell always mixing it up every day. I forgot to mention one thing, and I, I I joke about this all the time with everybody when we were talking about the Queen and Quick Step. He, my favorite rider is that Tim DeClerc. And, yeah, uh, just dude, it's such a workhorse. He's, he's all squared off in the head and squared off in the shoulders and just a monster. He'll drive it. You guys will be seeing him uh, in the lower, uh, before the mountain stages at the ends. He'll be driving the first half of that, that first half of those races and the first half of the, he'll be out in front of that peloton just driving it. What a workhorse. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. It, it, that team is just, that team has a lot. And, and same with this team. These Belgian Dutch guys are just big and strong. A lot of them, and they can just sit at the front. Mitchelton Scott, and- Scott bikes, Shimano. Uh, you carry Scott, don't you, down yep, there? Yep, All right. So, Scott. what's the deal there? They got Yates, Bauer. They got Jack Bauer. Uh, what's going on there? Well, I mean, you know, they're they're they're. Uh, I think they're coming here looking for stage wins. Daryl Impey, Adam Yates is their GC guy. He's been close to the box. He's been fourth a few years ago. He's leaving the team at the end of this year and going to Ine- Ineos uh, Grenadier and. They're bringing a solid squad. I mean, they have a really good, solid team. What now, do you? What do you? How do you like Chavez as a uh, GC? You know, just a team worker for Yates. I think Chavez has realized He's his not role. The GC guy. No, no, they're GC guys. Adam Yates, Movistar. They're riding canyons and they're on Shram. Um, well, first of all, you got to mention Alejandro Valverde, yeah, forty years 40 old. Forty years old. Uh, uh, not not world champion now. He's world champion the year before. Credible rider, super strong, super dedicated to the game. Uh, they have a solid, they, they don't have a GC team. They're looking at possibly a jersey. I could see Valverde may, maybe making a run at the mountain jersey. That Eric they're, Moss. They're going to want to win stages. I mean, Enric Moss is an enigma. I mean, maybe this guy has a good day in the mountains and jumps up pretty high on GC. Maybe it turns out that that they're going to work for him and maybe he can get on the box. He hasn't shown that yet, but he's still really young. Rojas, Padero, Solar, yeah. Solaire's out. They want yeah, him in the Velta, right? I think he's going Mark to the Velta, Solar. yeah. All right. NTT Pro Cycling. That's kind of an African team. Yep. BMC, Shimano, or slash Rotor. What's yeah. up with that? Uh, Rotor has been threatening to bring 
hydraulic derailers and whatnot out for years now. Nobody's, everybody's seen very, uh, you know, spy shots of this stuff, but, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. So they, f- first of all, uh, they got Nizzullo, yeah. right? He won the European Giacomo Championship. Giacomo Nizzullo just <laughs> recently in the span of three days won the Italian National Road Championship and he just won the Euro Championship on Wednesday. So he'll be in the Eurochamp jersey, so you won't see the. They got the, the that Tosin Hagen. They got Pause Vivo. They all got Romain Cruisinger. All about stage all wins. about stage wins. If they could get a stage win, it would make their entire Valgren's season on there. But you know, Nizzolo's sprinting good. I mean, maybe he gets a yellow jersey on Saturday. I mean, we we don't know. I mean, uh, the the sprint Saturday is going to be f- you know furious, and it's the one shot some of these guys have only time in their career to win it, to, to to get a yellow jersey. So Saturday stage is going to be very, uh, very intense. Tim, Team Enios, formerly Team Sky, of course. It's Brailsford. Brailsford is the deal, right? Sir Dave. F- Sir Dave, $40 million budget at least. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. They, they, they lead the pack. Yeah. They're on Pinarellas, of course, and Shimano. Um, and, of course, they got the defending champion, Egon yeah. Bernal. Yeah, Egon, Egon Bernal, uh, very young, 23-year-old Colombian had an incredible tour last year, did everything right. Um, didn't look awful great the last couple of weeks, but he had just come back from Columbia a few days earlier, or a week or so earlier. He's been an attitude. He lives in an attitude that would make, you know, that makes Billy Goats puke. So the guy- You like Carapaz too, don't you? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, they got a two-prong attack. Sir Dave doesn't, they, they, they're very smart. I mean, Brailsford is incredibly smart. They're always going to be, they're always going to have a backup plan every day. They pr- absolutely can win all three Grand Tours this year. They got they got Kwiatkowski. They, they got Kiyokowski, Luke Rowe. They got, they got Luke Rowe's their road captain. Van Barrel. D- uh, Dylan, Van, Dylan Van Barrel. Castro Vejo. They got just a super strong team. They come to win it. They, they've won so seven of the last We were talking tours, about those guys earlier, and they are the marginal gain guys. They, absolutely. They, everything is down to a science. Everything is measured. In fact, I was always amazed at two things. One, about the ketone shit. They, they would actually take Froom down or when they get into a mountain stage, they would actually go on ketones, deliver them things two or three times a day. And they would actually drop their weight a couple of pounds going into a mountain stage and then put the weight back on going into a flat stage. That's, that's freaking awesome. That's technical. It's just amazing. No, it's, it, it, this team has their shit together. I mean, the other they, thing that amazed me about them guys is they have this big tractor trailer and they full of, in this case, eight, they have eight separate washing machines and dryers. So all their bedding, you know, we were talking yeah. about the small rooms yeah. they're all in. All their bedding, all their uniforms and everything, it all stays together in one washing machine. They don't mix shit. They're taking no chances, you know? Yeah, no. Isn't that this, amazing? They, this team, they got cooks. They got, you know, the, all, most of these teams have their own chef that travels with them. A lot of these teams have their own cook, you know, cook tractor they're trailers, looking whatever. At the, they're looking at the fabric and, and oh, seeing if they can get everything. resistant. I mean, oh, this team God. here, you know, now it's team... Ineos Grenadier because they just released an SUV or they're going to release an SUV in Europe. The company Ineos is a petrol company, a lot of money. Um, British team, you know, they've won the last, they've won seven of the last eight or nine tours. They're, they, they're in it to win it. I mean, he, you know, Brailsford won't tell you this, I don't think, but he will, um, he wants to win all three. They're sending. Dude, that's incredible. They, they're sending the winner from two years ago, Garrett Thomas. They're sending him to the Giro and they're sending Chris Froome to uh, the Velta. And I mean, they certainly want to win all three and I think they can. I mean, I certainly think they, they can. So it'll be, um, it'll be very interesting to see what they do this year. So that's why they pulled Garrett Thomas out. Numbers weren't there, man. They, they know their numbers. And if, if the guy isn't quite, you know, honestly, Thomas and, and, and Froome looked pretty subpar at the Delphine. I mean, you know, Froome's coming back from a career ending injury. Most guys wouldn't, would be done at his age. He just signed a three-year deal with, with, with us, with, with Israeli startup. So he expects, he, Froome's incredible. I mean, a lot of people hate him. They, they bring up the, the, you know, different accusations and stuff. The, the guy's incredible. I mean, I think he's very focused and driven, and I'm not counting him out winning five tours. Then we got Yumbo Isma. I mean, come on. They're the Rinbag teams we were talking yep. about. 20 million budget, half of that relative yeah. of Ineos we just talked about. Bianchi, Bianchi, Bianchi bicycles. Shimano. Um, great team, man. For that little budget, they got Tom Dumoulin, super strong team. They super got t- uh, Tony Martin. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, that the guy Panzer is a wagon. German. Yeah, the Panzer wagon. They got Set Coos from Durango, Colorado, <laughs> mountain biker. Pay homage to uh, Bobby. We, we, we got yeah. to. We yeah, got to say no, that. they're they're bringing a team with to win the race. I mean, and then they got Roglic. I mean, come on. Yeah, former uh, you know downhill ski jumper, and uh, 
They got George Bennett. They got, they got Wout L- Van Art. L- L- Wout Van Art, My Art, personal man. favorite. He's been the man of the comeback from the uh, quarantine. He won uh, He won Strata Bianchi, which is on in, in, in the... Um, in, he in, in Milan, Italy. San Remo. He won Milan, San Remo. He, and he, he won a stage in Dauphiné. Yeah, the guy's incredible. I mean, I I, I love Dude, him. Dude, I mean, did you see last year on his time trial? Uh, tore his leg open. Could have uh, been a possible career it. injury. Oh, my God. He had a great tour last year, wore the old jersey and, and, and won a stage. He, um, you know, this team is strong. This team's coming to win this race. They they have two um two past Grand Tour winners in, in in Tommy D who won the the won the Giro Giro and 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 Primos Roglic from Slovenia who's super strong he's in the prime these guys are right age to win this stuff um you know it's going to be a real dog fight who, who, who are they going to let who are they going to let uh, be the GC guy who nah, are they going to protect Primos they're it's here, Primos they're all here. the yeah, way. It's Primos all the way. So they, but the backup let, is Tommy D. So and they'll, and they'll let Wild Van Van Art maybe uh, win might, a stage. Yeah, I mean, I think he's there to work. I mean, he uh, he's on. Obviously, he was on great form when they came back in, in in August. He might be on a little bit of a down right now. I mean, obviously, I think he wants to win. Being a Belgian, I think he obviously wants to win uh, Tour of Flanders, the Ronde van Vlaanderen, in I believe that's in October, and obviously wants to win Paris Roubaix, but. You know, his his big challenge is going to come from Matthew Vanderpool. Yeah. So, but Yumbo Visma will be there or thereabouts for sure. Sunweb. Now, they're on Cervellos and they're on Shimano's. And, I, and you brought this point up and I wanted to mention it again. You know, not all of these teams that are on Shimano get the shit for free. No, like, not, there's only, not all of them at all. Only a couple of Grand Tour teams that Shimano says, we're putting our name on there. You guys are getting it for free. Everybody else got to buy the shit, man. Yeah, they're buying it at a discount. They're getting, obviously, a, 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 the legit pro deal. But Sunweb is sponsored. Sunweb's a Shimano sponsor team, along with Ineos, FDJ, uh, Yumbo Vizma, and I believe there's one other one. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but... You got Soren Khan Anderson. You got Nicholas team. Arndt. Yep, state. They, you know they they they're they're you going after stage. You got that Tish Benut. Yeah, you got uh, a good. You got Nicholas a good Roach. Team. Nick, Nick, Nicky Roach. Uh, Steph, Stephen Roach is the man that did the triple in eighty. It did the triple in eighty seven. Won the Giro, the Tour, and the World Championship. And the same with the Irishman, Peterson, Stephen Bowl, Roach. They got Sunderland. a good strong team. I, I expect to see them going after stage. You know they're but they're no GC. No, no GC. Trek Segafredo. Of course, they're on Treks. American Shram. team. American team. Yep. Uh, yeah. So obviously the story there is uh, Richie Port. Richie Port. He always and disappoints, man. Rich, just- well, without it. Yeah. I mean, I think Richie will be changing teams this year. I would suspect he goes somewhere where he can settle into a super domestique role at his age. Um, they're bringing the current world champion, Mads Pedersen, who won in. in, in uh, Max Pedersen, won, right? Won, 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 won in Yorkshire last year. They got Falky Malmo, who's famous online with his uh, fucking SRAM. Um, yeah, his YouTube. Look that up. Go on YouTube and just search uh, F and Shram. It's pretty cool. But that said, I mean, they're, they've already said that they're they're dual leaders, so they're going in the first week to see who's on form and who's who's good. That never works ever. <laughs> never. So it'll be cure. I mean, I think for them, if they can put a guy in the top ten, that's a win. They and, got that Stoyvin. They got Skuns. Tom Skuns. Yeah. They, no, they got a, they got a solid team. Thunes. They got a solid team, but Nicholas Egg. The, the best they can hope for is some stage wins. They got any sprinters on there? Uh, Mads Pedersen can light it up, so you never know. He All right, be there. UAE Team Emirates, they're on Colnagos with Campy, classic. Yep. Uh, and they got the always, who had one one shining moment was that Fabio Aru. Yep. Uh, but he's not a GC guy anymore. No, nah, not really anymore. Uh, they got Alexander Kristoff from yeah. Norway. Yeah, he's awesome. The, you know, the old man, the old Viking. You know who I like with them is is they're, they're an outside GC team with Taddy Potikar from Slovenia. Another yeah, I'm telling 21 you, twenty one year old kid, never done the tour before. Super, super strong. They got that Dela Cruz. They got Formolo. Yeah, Formolo. they're they're you know, coming. I think this year's <laughs> this year's uh, this year is a year to possibly get a stage win or two. I don't know if Taddy's coming there looking at GC, dude. When but I man, saw, he's confident. You when know? I saw he was six point three. I know this doesn't mean much to you, but six point three watts per kilogram. That's like huge. No, nah, I mean, the, the dude's the dude's good. Dude. I mean, he's going to win a lot of big races. Um, he's aggressive. I'd be very disappointed if he doesn't get at least a stage win. Any other tour without Egon here, he'd be definitely winning the young rider jersey. He's young enough that he'll probably get that in his career yet. They got a good, solid team. I think you're looking at stages from them and possibly a top 10 with Taddy. You never know. Total direct, total direct energy. Uh, Willie Ayers, Shimano. Uh, geez, what they... 
I don't what they're their state they're going after Dude, some stage. They just want to get their card. They just want to get that Fazio. They want to get Calma that red, Jane. white, and blue on TV. Calma Jane, he's a breakaway guy. Yeah, he can climb. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um you're gonna see you're gonna see a total direct energy guy in every break for yeah, sure. That's for sure. their bread and butter. Um they're not bringing with anybody a big, big name, but they got a good solid team. So again, if they get a stage win, it makes their whole year. So Arkea Samsic. Now, you know, I'm all you gotta talk me out of Quintana. I mean, he's the only other guy, I think, in this whole list that's won both the Welta and the Giro. Yep. And so he's got to get this as his. He's as always a big... been a bridesmaid at the tour. I mean, I think, you know, if we wouldn't have COVID this year, the way he looked early on was just phenomenal. The, you know, the little Colombian climber, he left Moby Story, was there for basically his whole career. He's got a new lease on life with Arkea. They're a second division team. They're a continental team. Continental. He's got great support in Warren Bargay, who's leaving at the end of this season. But they his brothers Rosa, on the team. They got brothers Con on the team. They, they got Boyer. Connor Swift from the from Great Britain. They got a good, really solid Winner team. Winner Anaconda. Winner Anaconda will be there in the mountains. Dela with him. Place. He'll be a breakaway Absol guy. Absolutely. I mean, and then the bikes Canyon Shimano. Yeah. No. I. You know. Quintana can certainly get on the box this year for sure. Hopefully we haven't put you to sleep, but we got B&B &B Hotels. More. One more. One more. B&B Hotels, team. Vital Concepts. They're one of those uh, French selection Continental team. team uh, small Probably team. Probably like four to five million in the budget. Uh, yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. What the hell are they riding? Oh, KTMs. They're, they're riding KTMs, motorcycle fan. Yeah, and the Shimano Componentry. They're That's only bizarre. their probably biggest name rider on that team is Bright Brian Kukar, French Sprinter. Pierre um, Roland. Yeah, Pierre Roland's on the team. I mean, Backard, he's getting a little old. Gauthier, all, Chevalier. They're all about winning a stage. If they win a stage, it makes their whole year. You, 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 you know, B and B got in obviously with KTM's, which is uh, was kind of funny. But you wanted to see uh, Wanty Circus. Wanty Wanty Group Circus is like one of my favorite Belgian. They didn't, they didn't make the cut. They didn't, they didn't make the cut this year because they brought in all French teams, and and I get that. That's 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 fair. Right. So. uh let me quick. This was breaking news today. Velo News, uh, top ten. Uh, I'll start at top. Uh, there's their top ten picks. I'll start at the bottom, like uh, Johnny Carson. Number ten, uh, Julian Alaphilippe of the Conex Quickstep. Number nine, Miguel Angel Lopez of Astana. Number eight, Michael Landa of Bahrain McLaren. I think he's a little higher in that. I think he's a little higher on that. Seven, uh, Daniel Martinez of EF Pro. He won the very po very possible, very, very if possibly not higher, higher if not it. higher. Then, of course, number six, Taddy uh, Podicar. That's uh, fair. UAE Emirates. That's fair. He can do it. Uh, number five, they put Tom Dumoulin no. in there. Yeah, no, nah, I don't see it. I don't see it either, dude. No. I didn't see any kind of a spark from him this nah, year. Nah, so. he's going to be working for. Uh, he's going to be working for their team leader. For, I, for I just now. don't see it. So yeah. uh, five was Dumoulin. Four, they picked Thibaut Pino, Groupama, yeah. no, and, that, and that's a, that's a good place to put him. Uh, number three, Naro Quintana, Arkea Sansic. Yeah, I mean that's that's where he belongs. I number mean, he two, should be there. Number two, Primoz Roglic, yeah. Jumbo Visma again. Uh, and of course, the defending champion, number one, Egon Bernal. It's Gomez. tough to argue with that. I mean, if it, you, I know you're going to ask me, so I'll just tell you now. I mean, they're they're basically my top three and four right there. I mean, I kind of settled onto that yesterday when you left Pino, the shop. Quintana, Roslick, and that, that could yeah. And I think Bernal. I think I think Egon wins it unless something happens, and it can happen. That's why we race. Um, Primo should be there thereabouts in first and second, and it just depends on how. You know, it's it's really going to be interesting to see how these guys end up the last week or two, or the, the last week, the last week and a half, because that's really uncharted territory this year. None of these guys have raced more than five or six, eight days. So this is every day, and and it's very hilly this year. We didn't really touch on any of the it's stages. It's the highest uh, altitude wise and climbing wise. It's the highest Tour de France. Oh, I mean, I believe that because the first week is just ugly, just nasty stuff, and uh, we'll touch on that in later shows, but. It's going to be ugly. I mean, if, if you can't climb this year, it is going to be a suffer fest of, of epic proportion. Um, okay. Um, no podium girls this year. Come on. Well, I mean, I get it. You got to, you know, the, the social distancing, you don't know where they're going to be at night. Not no disrespect there, but I get it. I mean, some people look at that as being like a real ancient kind of thing that there's no reason. I think it's more of a tradition thing. I don't think any, I mean, hell, George Hincapi met his wife. She was a podium girl. And um, good point. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, you know, it, I think it's, it adds something interesting. It, it's not, I don't see it as sexist or demeaning to these women. I mean, this is, you know, they're beautiful. It's a beautiful race. There's beautiful women up there and you know, not being exploited or anything in my mind. Um, 
we'll see. I mean, maybe they come back next year. Maybe this is the, the you know, with the COVID, they were looking at this as an out for this kind of stuff. There'll be less dignitaries. The Badger won't be up there anymore directing people around. So, I mean, after the race, it'll be really quick and done. I think get these guys out of here, Back out of there. The yeah, yeah. Get them, get them in, get them in the bubble and keep the them bubble. there. And um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really curious to see how they do everything this year. But I will say this: I think it will be one of the most aggressively raced tours we've seen in the last twenty or thirty years. I think you have to go back to the the late 80s and maybe even the early 90s before drugs took over and everybody was super juicing and stuff. And, you know, there was a period there where everybody was just doing crazy stuff. But I think, you know, I'm maybe people will argue with me on this or, or have, have their own comment. I think everybody's pretty much on the same page as far as being clean. I don't think there's any- I kind of agree with that. I, I think, you know, you can see it. These guys are dragging their asses at the end of a week or two big times. Yeah. So I don't think there's anybody supercharged. There's certainly nobody doing the shit that was going on 10, 15 years ago. So yeah, I think we're going to see one of the best tours we've ever seen in our lifetime. Um, I'm so psyched and um, so glad you came out today. This is awesome. So no, I'm we, glad you had me out. I'm glad you, no, you, 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 you my you pleasure. Totally. Opportunity. So what we want to try to do is um, we want to do two or three shows. Uh, we want to recap. So we're going to do another one. We're going to be watching religiously and enjoying every minute. I'll probably watch it twice a day. Oh, I'm, different. <laughs> I will. My, my wife already knows. It's like from starting Saturday, all that's on in my house is Tour de France. <laughs> Got it. You know? So so we're going to get some good info from you, and we're going to come back before, uh, or maybe on the rest day. What maybe, do you think? Maybe next week of the following. Yeah, Okay, absolutely. we'll be back, and we're going to yeah. recap with you guys. And then uh, we'll go to the second uh, rest day. Yep. And then, and then we'll, we'll do one after the race. And we'll do one after the race. And then- uh, we also wanted to add, I was talking to Josh earlier. If you guys have some questions, you want to shoot them in here, we'll, we'll, we'll get those out and, uh, we'll, we'll try to answer those as best we can. And then if you guys like it, uh, then we're going to go ahead and, um, get ready and do a, do a couple little shows on the Euro and the Welta yeah, we'll, we'll, and some of the, yeah, spring, and some absolutely. Of the spring classics that are yeah. now in the fall. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be really, I, 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 I can't stress enough to you Enjoy it. Watch the race. Enjoy the scenery. Enjoy um, the scenery, man. It, it's going to be the history. Embrace it, the past. It's going to be you know if this gets people out on the road more and and gets people out riding bikes. Period. That's what it's all about. It, it you know I don't know. I'm I'm a visual guy, and when I watch this, it I fucking oh yeah, you get jacked I, up. I, I mean, I, I, I want to you know, go out and ride my bike. You, you know, man. real real quick memory of mine. Um, I remember watching Le Mans win the '89 Tour, beating beat, beating Fignon on the, on the Shams by eight seconds. Eight seconds. You know, in a time trial. Yep. Um, I remember that afternoon. Actually, I believe it was on ABC Sports or something live, and I was I uh, went over to my parents or something to get the bike or whatever. And I remember going out that day on the bike as an American, even though I watched the eighty the, the eighty six Tour that Le Mans won and stuff. I mean, it was a huge Le Mans fan like every American was at that time. And it was just, I mean, I think I did like, you know, a 35, 40 mile ride in like an hour and a half. It was just, you're just so jacked up. It's just so, and, and I still get that. I mean, the older, I mean, I've been, I've been racing and riding bikes since 77 and it never, as the older I get now with not probably any racing this year, which sucks because I race cycle cross and, and I train all year basically for that. Um, but I've I've kind of gotten a new rebirth of enjoying riding on the road, I'm going out and just you riding. On that. I just, oh you man, know, I you just go through. It. I mean, it's really hard because it's hard. This is cycling's the only sport in the world that you can do and replicate. You can go do these. You can take a vacation in France and go ride these climbs and ride these roads with the same equipment, the same equipment, the same everything. It's the only sport in the world where, in a normal year without the COVID. You can go up and talk to these guys. You can go up and get autographs and take pictures with them the whole nine yards. There's really nothing holding you back. And it, it, that's that's something that's always appealed to me. I mean, I mean, I discovered a love of road. I mean, a, a buddy of mine calls me, said, hey, this bike race is coming through the gap in 88 or 89. And um, was I was- Tour de Trump? Tour de Trump, man, came through. And, and at that time, I was still racing a little bit of BMX. And, and, and I knew John Tomac well from the BMX days and the wars because he grew up in Michigan. And so I remember somebody saying, it's like, yeah, Tomac's racing on the road now doing this road thing. And we hightailed it out to the gap. I think it was a wall road or something. It's like the Peloton went by. That was it. Like a week later, I, I, the, the week later I went and bought a road bike and it was just incredible. So anyway, John, thanks for coming out. This has been great. This whole no, lead up to it, you and I talking about it. And I hope we can do a lot more. I hope you guys enjoy it out there. Looking for the questions. 
Uh, you got stuff to look at now. And, you know, I'm so motivated. After I, I, I see a climbing stage, you know, and I see seven, eight guys, I see the decanting. And, you know, there's 30 guys that make the grade. Then there's 20. Then there's 10. And the decanting. And then the attacks. I just love it. And then when I get out there and we're riding, you know, not that I can climb as good as most people, but man, if I can get out there in front of somebody and I'm on a climb and, and I'm just, just it's and I get separation, cool. dude, yeah, I, but whoever cool. I'm with, I'm like, God, we got separation, dude. Oh yeah, you got it. Oh, we let you have it. It's like, whatever, yeah, dude, I yeah, got separation, yeah. man. You, you, you kiss you, my ass. You, you lay wood just a little bit harder on this climb and man. stuff. Uh, yeah. So you guys in the Tuesday night ride better be careful because, because Billy's coming to get you. I know, dude, he's a tough guy. All right, peace, out. Hope to hear from you guys soon and uh, send us the questions. <laughs>